So you can imagine how small they were when they came out. Take a look at tiny monarch butterfly eggs. Within weeks, the eggs hatch, caterpillars crawl out, and complete metamorphosis to become beautiful butterflies. We've got some milkweed. This container is all milkweed, and that's the only host plant for the monarch. These pollination stations are set up around the North Carolina Zoo to help monarchs. It's part of the SAFE effort, which stands for saving animals from extinction. Monarch populations ha are, are dropping. Every year they're dropping. When the weather cools off in the fall, monarchs migrate to Mexico, then return in the spring. During that 3,000 mile journey, the butterflies need to stop in wildflower and weed fields to rest and refuel. But many of these areas have been developed for homes and businesses. That's why the zoo set up these stations. This is like putting in a McDonald's for our monarch butterflies. They can stop, take a break. There's something to hide from the wind and the rain. They can get fuel because they use the nectar from the pollinator plants. And we even have their host plant so they can go ahead and start that next generation. Zoo staff want visitors to help too by planting their own pollination stations at home. Using a smartphone, guests can click on the QR code on the sign for the instructions to get started. We all need to get involved. It affects all of us and we all need to help. So even if we don't have a yard, we can still help with a container garden. Zoo educators can even put kids to work. I like to shake and bake and that gets the the seeds stuck to the ball. In Kid Zone at the Mud Cafe, children can build pollination pods to take home and plant. Within weeks, wildflowers will emerge. And when kids are getting their hands dirty anyway, might as well do something to help the earth. At the North Carolina Zoo, Shannon Smith, Fox 8 News. That is so cool.